your name be glorified. Jesus, you are my Lord. Let your name be glorified. I give you glory. I give you glory. Praise the Lord. Welcome to UK World Evangelism Church. My name is Bishop Simon. I'm excited to come to you today. Wherever you are, you are watching us either Facebook, YouTube, on the television. There is no distance in the realm of the Spirit. All you need is to release your faith. Believe God. As you hear the Word of God and receive it, you have made yourself a candidate for miracles, signs, and wonders. So wherever you are, just follow and flow with us. I'm excited. Today, I have a servant of God here with me. God brought him, and I know he has a word for you. I want to hear also, because I want to be refreshed and renewed in my mind, in the name of Jesus. I have uh, Pastor David French. Pastor, you're welcome. Oh, thank you so much. According to the regulations, oh, yes. we, we, we <laughs> shake our hands and keep two meters and apart. And keep two meters <laughs> apart. Praise God Almighty. Please, you're welcome to this program. Thank you, sir. I want you to be free because I know God wants to speak to the church. Yes. And we are a voice to the church. So I'm inquiring myself, what is God saying to the church? What is God saying to the church? Yes. And I believe that as we discuss and talk, God is going to speak to someone's heart today. Indeed. In the name of Jesus. Amen. But before we, we go any further, I want us to lead the people through a worship song, and then we'll come back and minister the Fantastic. word of God. Amen. So let's receive the song in the name of Jesus. Let's receive the song. God bless you. No place. You are God of my love. You are God. You are God. From beginning to the Yeah. 
Praise God, you are welcome back to this program and I know you are excited. We are declaring God is God, all alone by himself. We can't increase him, we can't diminish him, he stands alone, full standing. Therefore, we have to trust, believe and follow him. Praise God. Pastor David, I welcome you to this program. Thank you so much. Pastor you are now Sam. leading the program. Ah. Give us the word for today. Oh, bless you. <laughs> Give us you the know, word. I so much enjoyed that song for a start. I that, that was singing that the last two days. Amen. You uh, were. So that was really such a blessing <laughs> to hear that. Um, but today I want to talk to you um, a word that's come to me from the Lord. May your sons carry you Hallelujah. where you can't go. My God. May your sons carry you where you can't go. Yeah. You know, it's a strange story I'm going to tell you. But Feel free. Tell the us. The book of Genesis chapter 50. Yeah. And starting at verse 13, it's a, an end and a new beginning. You know, every time somebody dies who is the patriarch of a generation, it starts a new chapter. And this is talking about the death of Joseph. Yeah. And it says, and his sons carried him. Mm. Uh, sorry, the, sorry, the death of Isaac. Let me get it right. Yes. And his sons carried him to the land of Canaan and buried him in the cave of the field of Machpaleh, which field Abraham had bought as a burial site from Ephron the Hittite before Mamre. Mm. Now, this message is for leaders, for parents, particularly for church patriarchs, people who have others looking up to them. When I look even at my own ministry, which I wouldn't consider to be particularly large, but I think I have maybe about four daughters mm. and maybe a few more sons yeah people who look up to me and are drawing from me and i'm trying to give them something yeah because i know that one day i'm not going to be here uh, and the, the cases that you are talking about the sons and daughters that you see present with you that's there it. are other many people that your life have influenced far that Thank you, you may not even be seen it's true Yes, it's true. Yes, I believe that. No, no, sometimes you find people come and say to you that I've been watching you and you think. Absolutely. You don't even know who they are. They That's have to correct. introduce themselves. Yes. But we thank God. And, and so what we have to understand is one day we have to give the baton on. This we is must. like a relay race. Yeah. We can't just keep that baton going and drop dead on, on a line somewhere and not give it to somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, we will lose time in the race. So death is also is not predictable. Mm -hmm. You know, some people are perhaps thinking, well, I'll be here because my father was here till he was 82, so with good health and hygiene, I should be here till I'm 84. No, you can't possibly know that. And it's very imprudent to assume, unless God has given you a word, how long you have. So you should always be training up somebody to oh, take the baton man. from you. You know, the late Dr. Miles Monroe, mm -hmm. He says that the quality of a good leader is ability to raise people after him. Indeed. Yeah. Indeed. People that will replace him. Indeed. Yeah. Yeah. If nobody is following you. Yeah. And they are not being trained. Yeah. Where is your success? That's it. And a leader must have this consciousness Indeed. that I am not going to be here forever. Yes. Someone else has to carry on with the baton. No, and we saw it with Miles, didn't we? That when he, he died. And, and lost a large part of his family with him. And yet, That's a, the people were there trained, ready. To take there off was no interruption. The, the ministry. Amazing. Uh, we, we see, by the grace of God, one prominent one, uh, Reinhard Bonke. Indeed. The man actually handed over before. Yes. Before his time. Indeed. Yeah. No, so, so well. and, and his exit is like, he just left, but the walk. Very, very smooth. Absolutely. I'll come to another one later. <laughs> <laughs> now, so the question is, saints, who are you investing in? If you're a parent, is it your own children? Perhaps you have influence. Maybe you don't even have your own children. But there are other younger people who are looking up to you. You should be investing in them. You should be teaching them something. You should be helping them to grow. And the idea is that when you finally pass over that battle and they should go past you mm. because we want progress we don't want to stop mm. where you stop we need to keep going Hallelujah. so 
we have to ask ourselves, what legacy am I leaving on this earth? And who will honor my memory? And who will carry me where I can't go? And I want us to see how that happened in the life of Isaac. He was carried. He was carried by his sons all the way out of Egypt, Egypt. all the way up into Israel. My God. And this process was so lengthy. That's correct. Do you know that when he died, they first of all had to wrap him up in the Egyptian style, like a mummy. Yes. For 40 days. And preserve him. 40 days. <laughs> <laughs> and after that, they said, now we must honor this person by crying. Yeah. They cried for 70 days. Amazing grace. Amazing grace. After they finished crying for 70 days, this is now 110 days, they now start to transport his body back north up from Egypt to Israel. And, and we don't even know how many days did they... We can guess. Yes. Because remember, the Bible, Exodus, tells us the journey should have taken 40 days. There we go. It wasn't much... There different from that I don't think the transport had improved much yes and they're carrying a body so another 40 days probably to get to Israel that's 150 days they just reached the border of Israel My they God. didn't bury him at the border they buried him in Shechem what we call Shechem what the the Hebrew people would just call Shum something yeah. like that. Shum yes but it's it's another probably two four days journey so now we've gone 110 plus 40, that's 150. And then when they got there, they're still not finished. They <laughs> cried for a whole week. <laughs> <laughs> to, the, to the point that people around began to guess, who is this person? Exactly. That this ceremony is taking place for. Exactly. Yeah. They cried in, in a word that is so amazing that it became a word in Hebrew that just meant uh, the mourning of the Egyptians, the weeping, the, the pouring out of their grief. And, and so I want us to just ask ourselves some questions. Who was it they were carrying? Well, I've said that. It was Isaac. It was their father. It was somebody who had invested in all of them. Yeah. And yet there was this disjointed investment because, of course, Joseph, around the age of 17, was suddenly separated from the father who loved him the most. Yeah. He's now separated from his brothers. He's making fantastic progress. But, of course, at a price, because at first he's serving in Potiphar's house. Yep. Then he's wrongly accused. He goes to prison. And then we know in one day he suddenly becomes prime minister. <laughs> now, how did that happen? I mean, it happened, I believe, because his father had invested in him. Absolutely. And somehow he himself had enough faith from that investment to keep the journey going, Hallelujah. even at 17 years old. Hallelujah. To the point that when he met his brothers, he had already forgiven them. Yeah amazing yeah. yeah absolutely amazing because many of us here on listening to the sound of my voice you may be being blocked because there's somebody you can't seem to forgive mm. and yet if you study the life of Joseph it should help you yeah because this man was badly abused by his brothers they sold him into slavery he suffered so much he was separated from the father that he loved and his life became unpleasant and painful mm. and his brothers were there at his mercy begging for food they didn't know who he was and yet in his heart somehow he had already forgiven them and the reason i'm sure he'd forgiven them is because he was able to succeed but he, 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 he even made a powerful statement when he they finally reconciled and, and, and met one another he said to them it was not you exactly it was not you that yes. did what happened to me yes you're right but God have sent me ahead yes of you in order so that your lives can be preserved yes yes it's amazing how he could see the plan of God the providence through of God. his pain my God. and his suffering my God my and God. if God could help us to have that kind of insight and understanding you know, in the scripture, the Bible says, all these things that are written, they are written for our learning. It's true. So you are watching us right now. You are hearing this story about Jacob, about Joseph, about the, the, the history, and the transfer from one generation to another generation. And maybe 
you have had people that wounded you or people that offended you or people that have done things evil about you. Mm. You don't know why God allowed this thing to happen. No. Could it be that in the process of time, God will unveil to you through that experience his goodness, Absolutely. his mercy, Absolutely. his love, his kindness. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. And the question I asked next was, who carried him? Who carried him? You know, it was the 12 sons and then around them, the entourage of Egypt. Yes. They come to Egypt just as one person, Joseph. Yeah. And now they were leaving Egypt as a huge company of people. Hallelujah. They had impacted the nation. Yeah. And yet there were still few. Yeah. And it shows us that when we are together in God's purposes, even though we're just a few, we can make an enormous impact where we are. Hallelujah. We can shake the place. That's it. Because the kind of funeral that they gave to Isaac, <laughs> I, I mean, even Pharaoh's funeral couldn't probably have been much Pharaoh more. Pharaoh himself was <laughs> amazed. Absolutely. Yeah. Because he has to give them all the provision. Yes. The, all the camels they want, everything they needed, go ahead. Yeah. And his whole government, I mean, was weakened by that big exodus of because people. Because Joseph after a company. Yeah, and he was the prime minister. He was doing all the all the work, <laughs> all the heavy lifting. And then we have to ask, why did they carry it? Well, the obvious answer is because he was dead. Yeah. But it was also to honor him. And thirdly, it was because he had asked them to do it. Yes. He said, don't leave my bones in this place. Make Take me this back. promise. Take it back. My God. Why? Because I believe... Honestly, that he believed in the resurrection of the Hallelujah. dead. Hallelujah. He must Hallelujah. have done. Why yes. would you care about your bones if you didn't think something was going to happen to them afterwards? Amazing. And so he had his bones put there in the tomb in Shechem. Yeah. Do you know they're still there to this day? Their bones are still there. I haven't managed to visit that place because yeah. it's very dangerous. Yes. Uh, it's now almost no Jews can go there. Mm. It's in one of those areas of great conflict. Yeah. But... We hope that one day we'll have access again. But what's important is this, that when the Lord returns, yeah. he's ready. He's ready for takeoff. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, and, and in Genesis uh, 49, 29 to 13, it says that where they carried him. In the cave that is in the field of Machpelah, which is before Mamre in the land of Canaan which Abraham brought along with the field from Ephron the Hittite for a burial mm. site. Mm. That's one of the most holy places in Israel. That's correct. Or so many patriarchs in that place. Yeah. Absolutely yep. amazing. I would love to be able to, you know, be standing by there when the Lord returns. <laughs> <laughs> you see all these great men of God coming I, up. I, I believe God have a, a greater fantasy <laughs> at the resurrection. It's true. The things no. are going to we, happen. We're going to be so excited. Spectacular. We are going to be so excited. <laughs> so I want you to be encouraged and know that God has a plan for us. Mm -hmm. Everything God does, He does it according to His orderliness. Yes, He does. You can see our father Abraham, He bought a place. Yes, He did. Because He wanted His bones to be preserved there. Yes. And He encouraged His children, make sure yep. I'm buried there. Indeed. And the children have followed it even up till today. today. It's true. It's true. Meaning that there are things God is instructing us to do. We are learning from them that they were able to honor the instructions of their father. Mm -hmm. What more about yes. our Heavenly Father? Indeed. Yeah. And and what's so amazing here is the foresight, as you say, and even today if you visit Jerusalem yes. and you stand opposite the Temple Mount, yes. do you know there's a graveyard right there? Really? Big graveyard. And as you look down this graveyard, it, I'm sure it's because Jewish people, they believe, some of them, that the Messiah is coming. Yes. And they believe he's coming through the East Gate. Yes. And that graveyard is on the East Side. Yes. So what those people are saying that believe in the resurrection is that when Messiah <laughs> comes, I want to be the first one up to, to greet him. <laughs> it's such a statement of faith. <laughs> yes, you reminded me. When I traveled, I, I asked myself, why did they seal the East Gate? Because mm. that gate is yes. closed. It's and closed. then following it is also graves yes. all around. Yes. Yes. And that's it. I mean, that east gate is the gate that uh, I believe is Ezekiel tells us. The Messiah will come back through that gate. Through that gate inside. And, and so that's a place to watch. My Praise God. Praise God. My God. Now, I just want to go back to that deep mourning that happened. Yeah. Because I don't want people listening to my voice 
to have great regret when a father dies. Mm. You know, yes, we'll experience some regret. It's inevitable. Yeah. But sometimes that regret is multiplied because the relationship with that father figure was not what it ought to have been. Mm. And then you feel the loss of what could have been. Mm. And I believe, sadly, for Joseph, that was definitely some of his experience that yes, day. Yes, yes. Because he'd been separated from his father for, for decades. Yeah. And so he must have wept out of that just human reaction. Mm. Imagine if I'd had all these 50 years or so with my father. With my father. Yes, but now I, I'm losing him also now. Yeah, and it's too late now for my, anything. My, 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 my. But for some of you listening to Hallelujah. my voice, Ooh. it's not too late. It's not too late. There's still time. Go and reconcile with that father, mm. that mother, that authority figure. Or if you're the child and you know that you've fallen out and, and you can do something, go and make it good. And you as the father, sometimes you've fallen out with your children and you're being stubborn and you're being hard to contact. You're not taking the phone calls. You're being very uh, obstructive. To reconciliation stop it mm. allow the hearts of the fathers and the sons to come back together again hallelujah that's what the lord said that it would happen with john the baptist Woo! he would glory. turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the fathers I, I, if you read also the book of malachi i think it's one of the last oh, statements yes. god yes. made here he said he would turn the heart of the fathers to their children and their children to their fathers indeed else he will bring a cause yes so what you're talking here is so powerful that if we have opportunity now, mm. we should reconcile. Definitely. Sometimes with the natural father figure, natural mother figure, spiritual relationship, yes. even friendships. Because there are friends that are broken because either this person mm -hmm. did something or the other yeah. person and they broke and they become enemies. Yes. But now when that person dies, it's no more there. It's true. There's still pain left. Yes. That could have been dealt with before. You're, you're so right. And it's such a tragic loss of what could have been. <sighs> and it grieves the heart of God. Yes. Because God wants us to live in harmony. Yes. He wants us to live in peace. He wants us to model love. Yes. After all, in John 13, we hear this. By this shall all men know. Ah, that you are my God followers. God you're my disciples. And that's the only commandment. I feel like I want to give you a high five, but I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> because you have love one for another. For another. And if we don't exhibit that love, my God. how is the world supposed to see? My God. We we need to get it together, church. Yes. We really need to get it together. Yes. I, ju I just want to mention one uh, great leader that I said I would come back to. Yes. Dr. Billy Graham. Billy Graham. I mean, that man was exemplary. My God. Never took a lot of money. Mm. Always lived a very clean life prayed a lot, sought God, ordered his diary, was very focused on just the call he had, evangelism. Mm. Mm. I, I told my leaders at church, study this man. And there's a fantastic book called A Parable of American Righteousness Praise by God. a man called Frody. Mm. If you get a chance to read it, it's one of the most frank and honest biographies of Billy Graham. Mm. And you can learn so much from it. This is very important because the man also, you can see how many generations he ministered to. Indeed. He, he ministered to a point of becoming even ambassador for peace. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> In difficult times. Yes. 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 So I, I want to encourage you. Take note of that very man. What's the name of this book you're talking about? It's called A, a Parable of American Righteousness. A Parable of American and the man's Righteousness. And the man that wrote it was Frody. Frody. Frody, so that's his surname. Books like that are very encouraging for you to get it. Because when you look at the life of the people who have gone before us, it helps you to put your own house in order. Mm -hmm. Let's get that book. And Billy Graham, if you mention the name, both leaders, both George, everybody knew this and man stood out. Exactly. I respected him. Yes. And, and then I want to just close with this thought. Yeah. In Exodus 20, yeah. verse 12, it says, Honor your father and your mother. Mm so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving Hallelujah. you. Hallelujah. You know, when we look at that word honor in the Hebrew, kavad, mm. and the fact is that it's in the PL yes. verb tense, which yes. is the intensely active sense. Yes. That means 
You don't just say, um, oh, yes, you sit there, Dad. Thank you. No, you make a fuss of that person. To honor them. To honor them, to actively show that you're honoring them. You run around a little bit, you do some things. I'm not saying, you know, become a horrible kind of greasy person, but honor them properly. Do it sincerely. Do something visible, yes. tangible. It's the exact same word that's sure. used when we're told to honor God. My God. So that's how strongly God wants us to honor our parents. We're going to take a short break and we're going to come back again and we start from this place, honoring, honoring the Father. And so rightly what you said because it ties up to longevity mm. how long we live yes is tied up to the honor we give to those who are figures of fatherliness to us yes physical spiritual agree i want you to stay tuned we're going to take a short break and then we are going to come back to you in the name of jesus Praise the Lord. Welcome back to UK World Evangelism Church. I am here with uh, God's servant, Apostle, Reverend Pastor David. You're welcome back. Oh, bless you. Yes, you're welcome it's back to this It's good to part. be here, Bishop Simon. I'm excited also to be here. You are bringing us something very profound. Thank you. Very, very profound. Honoring. Yes. Honoring. Uh, when we honor those in authority, when we honor fathers, when we honor spiritual fathers, it adds to our longevity here on earth. It does. In fact, God said it is a, it's a commandment with a promise attached to it. Yes, and in the commandments, it's interesting. You know, you've got the commandments concerning God. Yes. You, you know, you mustn't have any other gods before God. You mustn't make any images. Yeah. Um, you mustn't bow down and serve them and so on. Yeah. And you must keep the Sabbath. Yeah. And then we come to this commandment, the first amongst the commandments to men. Yes. You must honor your parents. You must honor them. It's absolutely the number one Yes. for, for human relationships. You know, <clears throat> I had an experience of a, 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 a sister that came to me uh, for prayer. Yes. And then as I wanted to pray, I, you know, it's like the Holy Spirit stopped me. Mm -hmm. I couldn't pray. Now I asked her, how is your father? She began to weep and cry. I right. said, what has happened? She does not talk to her father, and mm -hmm. her father does not talk to her. Yes. Because there are some experiences she had with her father at the, at the earlier part of her life. Inside her, she does not want to see or hear the father. Yes. The, the Lord said to me, tell her that if you want to move forward in your life, yep. you have now opportunity to go back to your father with a call. Mm. and say, I have forgiven, and I want us to... Yes. You she... know, I, I've had the same experience, but you finish your story. <laughs> yeah, so she cried them all. I said, my dear sister, if I'm going to help you, this is God trying to help you. Do it. Mm. And she left, and finally went and had this, like, pouring out her heart with her father. 
she said when she began to speak to the father, the father was crying on oh, the other side. Wow. She herself was crying on this side. Fantastic. And as they cried all together, finally, the whole thing melted down. Praise they God. They become reconciled. Yes. It did not take a week the father died. Oh, Lord. That was just in time. Yes. Just in time. Thank yes. God. No, I had the same experience. I was in a church. I remember in Stoke Newington. Yes. And I went up to the altar to pray for somebody at the altar. Yes. And exactly what happened to you, God stopped me and said, ask her about her father. Amazing. Yeah. And that was the breakthrough. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. This is powerful. I also, I was ministering a place uh, in Ashford, mm. in a family. The whole family, they all gathered together. The house was full. So we are having fellowship and ministry. As I began to pray, the power of God came through. So people were touched. Yes. Really very, very strong. So the mother of that house called me upstairs and called a sister upstairs also mm. and said, I want you to pray for this sister. She's been having problem. Yes. Her problem is that she finds it very hard even to hug her husband. Mm -mm. Anytime she's hugging her husband, it's like the man is like an enemy or something like that. Mm. Uh, so after this uh, introduction, then I want to pray for her. Yes. Again, immediately I want to pray for her. I was stopped again. <laughs> <laughs> then I ask her, sister, how about your father? He said, don't call the name. Mm -mm. Oh my God. <laughs> I said, please try and tell me more. He said, no, I don't want to bet. In fact, he is dead. Oh dear. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She began to tell me that even the day the father died, while the man was being buried, he was cursing the cops. Mm -mm. So her life was... <laughs> yes, caller. Hello. Hello, is that Sheila? Yes, go ahead. Hello? Yes, we are hearing you. Mm. Is that Sheila? <laughs> it's not Sheila. Who do you want to speak to? Hello? All right, let's go. So, she said even the day the father was being buried, she was causing the, the, mm. the burial. Because of, again, things happen. Yeah. You know, no matter how bad it is, but the commandment of God is beyond that. Of course. So, as I pleaded with her that you must forgive your father. Mm. You have to. You have to forgive your father. Then the Holy Spirit came in and she was convicted. Then I led her through a confessional prayer, forgiving the father and the repenting of the Fantastic. things that has happened. Mm. When I finished praying for her, you see her face lit up like a shining light yes now she goes down where everybody was the first thing she did was to go and hug the husband oh and the people around began to clap their hands wow. because they have never seen that happen before that is so powerful just because of acknowledging this principle that you yes. are you are sharing with us exactly yes. no it's such a blockage any forgiveness or oh, sorry any unforgiveness yes will cause us a blockage in fact the Lord taught us that God won't hear our prayers if we have unforgiveness in our hearts. Yeah. So we're only frustrating ourselves Absolutely. and our own progress. Absolutely. You know, there are times uh, in a marriage, in a marriage, as a married man, yeah. when I may be a little upset. Yes. Even Saint David. Yeah. Will get upset with his wife, <laughs> <laughs> and and after a while, you you know that you're going to minister somewhere, and you better go and sort that thing out because if absolutely. Not, you may find that your ministry falls flat. Absolutely. Because it's blocking your relationship with the Lord. So we as preachers we, know. We, we are human beings. Yeah. And we pass through mm -hmm. things. But what has kept us is that having known the will of God, the word of God, what he says, then you are challenged. Yeah. And that challenge, will you honor God? Because obeying the word of God also is an honor to God. It is. When you disobey God's word, you are not honoring him. You're so right. But when you obey God's word, you are honoring him, acknowledging him as your heavenly father. Yes. So sometimes I remember once, <laughs> this one is me in person. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I was having fellowship with some brethren outside mm. and we are praying all night because we are desiring to, 
you know, access the power of God. We are, we are desiring to access God in a, you know. Yes. So we pray from 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock. Wow. In this prayer, when we start praying, it's like the spirit of prophecy comes into the meeting mm -hmm. and began to challenge each one of us <laughs> <laughs> in our very weakest point. Yes. Very, very. And you will know that this is God speaking to us because the things that I've revealed are not are not things that we know ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yes, caller. Hello, man of God. Hello, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. I ring a number a while ago, but I thought it was one of my clients, but I realized it was the wrong number. Okay. Yeah. What? I'm fine, thanks. I was calling yesterday for some prayer with this prayer line, but I never get through. <laughs> okay, you got through today. Pardon me? I say you have gotten through today. Yeah, I've called it for some prayer. Okay, what do you want us to pray for? Mm. There are so many pains in my body, my legs, elbow, pain all over. Pain all over your and, body. And my client, them is like everybody. Mm. I do see my client, them, I don't know what's going on. Stretch your hands. And we have one client from morning. Okay, stretch your hands to us. Are you ready? Mm. Yeah, I'm ready. Oh. Heavenly Father, we agree with your daughter right now. Yes, Father. We pray mm -hmm. for the touch of God over your life. Even while we are yet praying. Mm -hmm. We recommend every pain, everything that is assigned against you to cease in operation now. Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus, we release the power of God. Yes, God. Amen. From the crown of your head to the Amen. sole of your feet. Amen. We command every attack over your life to cease in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And we command this pain to leave your body now yes. in the name of Amen. Jesus. We command Amen. it to leave you now. We command it Amen. to leave you now in Jesus' Amen. mighty name. Shout Amen. 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 Shout Amen. it again. Amen. Shout it again. Amen. Yes. God Amen. bless you. God bless you, my bless sister. You. As you have been, you, as you have believed, God will do it unto you. Amen. Amen. He's, uh, he's the same God who says he delights in the prosperity of his servant. Hallelujah. So continue to serve him. Amen. And you will see prosperity. Amen. God bless you. Amen. So in this in this prayer meeting, hmm. we were three brothers, friends. We will start and we worship. Now we begin to, it's like we want to go where God is and suddenly the spirit of prophecy will come on one of us and that person will begin to speak. Yes, I will do. You put in check. Yes. Hello, caller. All right, the light has cut off. So, I remember one day, one of the nights, as the spirit of prophecy came in, the, the brother prophesied over me and said, now, God is speaking to you. Anytime you and your wife is talking, you are quoting scriptures. It's not scripture you should be quoting. <laughs> <laughs> you should just talk with that. Wow. And by the way, when you go home this morning, she will be in the kitchen watching the plates. You should go straight into the kitchen and say to her, I've been doing this. Yep. It's not right. I want you to forgive me. Wow. Specific. <laughs> <laughs> that shook me. Of course. The next day, another thing happened. We want to enter into the place where God is. And suddenly the Spirit of God comes on one of us again. He began mm -hmm. to prophesy to one of us. He said, you want to be righteous before God, but you have not paid your insurance to your car. Uh -huh. You have not paid your t TV license. Oh, yeah. And you are using them against the law. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that is hot. Something happened in that meeting. Yes, caller. <laughs> The line is cut off. So something happened in that meeting. Yeah. Three of us that prayed, it was awesome. I think we had that experience for nearly six months. Our lives were transformed wow. completely. That's fantastic. Yes. So now what I learned from that is that it's not God is not the one that is hindering us. Hmm. But there are things in us or around us that could hinder us from receiving things from God. And one of the things you are talking is very important. Yes. Honoring the father yes indeed and and keeping that clear record with god yeah is so important i remember once i had some issues going on yeah i couldn't resolve them 
I was on the board, as you know, with uh, Evangelist Teresa Wairuma. Yes. She had her meeting on in London. Yes. I'm driving to the meeting and I'm suddenly th thinking, hang on, you're going to a prophetic meeting here. <laughs> this is just not even an ordinary prophet. This yes. is a, a prophet who just sees so much. Yes. And you're going to probably be sitting right next to her during the meeting. So I said to God, I said, God, look, we're in the process of trying to resolve these issues. I know that I've got business to sort out with you. Let's take the call. Yes, Carla. Good Hello. afternoon, Bishop. Good afternoon. How are you? Mm. I'm fine, Bishop. I just wanted to pray for my health. I've been having a lot of challenges. Okay. This one got to heal me, please. Stretch your hands to us. Yes, sir. He Heavenly Father, we are in agreement with your daughter. Mm. Healing is a bread for the children. Yes, Lord. By his stripes, we were are healed. We release that healing power of God right now to touch you. Yes. From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. Mm. We rebuke that affliction over your body. Yes, we release the peace of God to you right now in the name of yes, Jesus. Amen. Everything the enemy have assigned against your life, we command it to cease mm. in the name of Jesus. Amen. We lose Amen. you and we declare you now set free, mm. set, free set free, Amen. set free, set free yes, in Amen. Jesus mighty name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, my Amen. sister. Thank you, sir. God bless Amen. you as you have believed. You. God will do unto you. Yes. Amen. It is well Amen. with you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, sir. Bye. Bless you. Bye. So, right. so back to this story. Yeah. So now I go to the meeting. Yeah. Sure enough, I'm sitting next to Teresa Wairimu. <laughs> and um, my prayer has gone up. That meeting happened. Nothing happened during the meeting. I yes. came back the next night. I came and sat right next to her again. Yes. She said, oh, Pastor French. So good to see you, um, because we missed you last night. <laughs> I'm thinking, I was sitting right next to you. But somehow the Spirit of God hit me so much. Yes. She didn't even she didn't see know you. I was in the meeting. I mean, it's just amazing. <laughs> but because, you know, when it comes to keeping a, accounts with God, you and I, I'm sure we know. Yes. we got to keep it clear. It has to be clear. If it's not clear, we're crazy. Mm. Mm. And, and that's why... We want to tell everyone. Yeah. Keep clear accounts with God. Yes. If it's going to take a little while, yes. Take but your you time. But you must get it right. But keep working on it. Tell Hallelujah. God, I'm working on this. I'm not finished yet. Mm. You may not finish it in one day. Yeah. But you better get working. I, I, I always say to some of the leaders working with me, I say, audit yourself. Indeed. In the natural. Audit yourself before yes. God also. So that every day you can lift your hands. The Bible says, who will come to the heel of the Lord. Mm -hmm. You must have a pure heart yes. and a clean hands. Indeed. So you can't lift a hand that is defiled to God, expecting God to receive it. No. Nope. He wants us to keep it clean Indeed. in all things. Yes. And the area you have raised up is very powerful and challenging that our blessings actually flow through this lineage yes. of honoring those in authority, father, mother, uh, spiritual, uh, you know, oversight. Yes. People that God has placed in authority over us, honoring them actually opens the floodgate of favor. Mm, it does. It, it 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 helps one to prosper in the affairs of life. Yes. The honor that you give. Yes. But not only that. Also, the Bible said that whatever we sow, mm. we reap. Indeed. Because if my father die, I honor him, mm. and I've honored him. When I also go, I expect that I've shown that honor. Yes. The honor is also repeated back. That's that's so brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. It's true because whatever a man sows, he that shall he also reap. My God. And God is not mocked. No. He can't be mocked. <laughs> it's like, you know, oh, we used to tell this story in the old church I was in. Yes. How uh, everybody decided that uh, they were supposed to bring some sugar to church. Okay. So... They all brought their, their sugar to church, but it was supposed to be sugar water. Yes. But some of them decided that they wouldn't put much sugar in the water because, you know, in the mix, it would, nobody would tell. And so when it came to the point everyone was doing the same thing, then the water had no taste. And, and this is what happens when people are trying to uh, have a good relationship with God, but they don't honor Him in their giving. Mm. You know, mm. we have to honor God in our giving. We have to show that we're serious. If mm. we want God to bless us with material things, yet we can't release anything material to God, 
It's a dishonor. And, and, and you know, while we pass through these challenges they're all over the world as we, as, as we had, you know, from f February till we, uh, this period of time we are in now, in one of the uh, programs I was having here, the Lord said to me, begin to speak to the nations mm. to give him the honor that is due to him. Yes. Because in general, many nationalities have dishonored God. True. Many of our leadership have dishonored God. Yes. They are not acknowledging him at all. Agreed. And, and God said to me, tell them to give me the honor that is due to me because yes. I am the one who oversees the affairs of life. Yes. I rule in the affairs of life on a continuous basis. And so some leaders don't even know that, you know, some of the seasons and the times that we are dealing with, God is watching mm -hmm. and he's sitting at his throne and he's not moved. No, no, absolutely. It's, Hallelujah. It's true. If we read, um, I think it's the 76th Psalm of yes. Asaph, you find that Asaph begins by talking about how great God has made Zion and Jerusalem. Yeah. And then it talks about how God rules over the nations, how he watches. Yes. And how he brings judgment. Yes. And at the end, it starts saying how those nations will come and pay tribute to God. Hallelujah. Because in the end, you don't have a choice. Mm. If you don't want to honor God uh, voluntarily, in the end, every knee shall bow, and every <laughs> tongue shall confess, yes. and every nation shall come. I, and, I, and sometimes God says, I am the one who will rebuke the devourer yes. for thy sake. Indeed. There are certain challenges people go through. God is saying, I need honor from you. Mm -hmm. Acknowledge me in, yes. the, in the whole sequence. Give me the position, the place that I am, and then I will rebuke yep. that which you cannot rebuke for yourself. That's it. Yeah. And and God puts a protection around us. Absolutely. The other day I went to Canterbury with the family and we had one of those lovely eat out to help out meals in a quite expensive lunch place where I wouldn't normally go, but I thought since we're saving all this money. <laughs> yes, Carla, how are you? Hello. Hello. Oh hello. Yes, what do you want God to do for you? Yes, I'm believing God for a, a breakthrough financially. Okay. I'm believing God financially. I don't have any money and I have a burden to start my own studio. <laughs> your own studio? What do you want to do with your studio? Mm -hmm. Yes, I would like to um, preach in the studio and be able to record my music. Praise God. All right. Let's pray. Are you ready? Sorry? Are you ready for us to pray for you? Yes, I am ready. Stretch your hands to us right now. Father, we yes. agree with your daughter. The Bible says that he will supply all our needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. Mm. Heavenly Father, we ask you for divine intervention yes. in the life of your daughter. Father, any door the enemy has closed concerning her finance, we ask that it be opened right now in the name of Jesus. If there are people that are owing you money, we ask that the Lord will touch yes. their hearts to pay you what they have taken from you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every closed door in your life financially, I command that they open right now in the name of Jesus. I receive. I Ask the Lord to give you the resources to accomplish your dreams and your visions, mm. to build that studio, to record your songs, and to preach the gospel to Jesus of Jesus Christ. Mm. Receive that favor now yes. in the name of Jesus. Receive it now in Jesus' name. Mm. Shout amen. amen. Shout it again. Mm. Amen. Shout it again. Amen. God bless you, my dear sister. God bless you. God will honor this prayer. Yes. It is well with you. God bless you. Thank you. God oh, bless you. Bye bless bye. You. Yeah. So back to that story. So we're sitting out there in the out in the street because it was a nice day. Yes. And we're having this very lovely food. And it came to paying, my wife paid. And I was wearing a sort of trousers where my wallet didn't stain very well. So it, it was this one. So it dropped out on the floor. In the street in Canterbury. I didn't know. My God. I went down the road. I saw some shop having a sale on. I went in. I picked up a few things. I went to buy them. And then suddenly I was panicking. Like, the the post is gone. Where's, where's my wallet? So I, I said, uh, I'll be back. So I went back to the restaurant. 
do you know people are walking up and down this street the whole time busy day yes yes caller hello caller hello yes I want Bishop to pray for me okay what do you want us to pray for Okay. I want Bishop to pray for me for Stretch your, stretch your hands if you can. Stretch your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we rebuke this affliction on your life. Yes. We command this affliction to leave you now in the name of Jesus. We command this sickness on your body to expire, die. We cause that sickness to die from the root. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We demand your freedom. We command Amen. your freedom. We lose you right now. And we Amen. break every chain of darkness. We break every power Amen. of darkness. We break every power acting against the will of God in your life. Amen. We demand your freedom now. From the crown Amen. of your head to the sole of your feet. In Jesus' Amen. mighty name. Amen. Amen. Where are you calling Amen. from, Cola? Where are you calling from? Where, where are you calling from? I'm from Dagenham. From okay. Dagenham. All right, well, the Lord bless you richly there in Dagenham. And I, I just sense that there's somebody you need to go and reconcile with. There's somebody that you need to reconcile with, sir. Try, try and search your heart and see if there's somebody you need to make peace with. Praise God. If there's anybody that you really need to make peace with, you reach out to that person and God will help you and give you the grace. Amen? Amen. God bless you. Amen. Bless God bless you. you. Amen. Bye-bye. Yeah. So, so I go back. <laughs> I'm going back to the story now. And, and there is my chair where I was sitting and it was against the wall. Unfortunately, this had fallen. Right there. Literally there, so it was propped between the chair leg and the wall. And it's still there. I picked it up, it had my driving license, everything my credit cards, there. my pass, money. Everything is Everything there. was there. My God. God, he said, I will rebuke Devara. He does, that's what it means. For I say, he will not allow Devara to take no, advantage of our weakness. Take it. Hallelujah. It's protected. Amazing. Wherever you are, our time is running out. There is a line under the, the first line. If we run out of time, take that number. It goes straight to my office. If you call, I'm not there. Leave a, leave a message. I'll call you back and I pray for you. We have only 57 seconds. Can you look at that camera and pray for anyone watching that? Whatever yes. the Lord yes. say. Father, we want to thank you that you want us to leave a legacy in this earth. And so, thank God, you, I Jesus. pray for every person hearing the sound of my voice. Thank you, Lord. Lord, they will begin to plan their legacy. If they're already engaged in it, Lord, let them continue. Let Thank it prosper. Let it be like leaving something for the next life. Yes. Because, God, we are not just staying here. We are going on beyond here Hallelujah. into eternity. And so, Ooh, Father, I pray, God, you'll give us wisdom, insight, and understanding Jesus. to know that there will be somebody to carry our name Jesus. on. Lord, after we have left this earth, we shall Jesus. not leave it with nothing left behind. Hallelujah. But, Lord, we will leave a last legacy Thank because you, of your grace because of your kindness because Thank of your Jesus. mercies Thank because you, of all that you've done for us lord let hallelujah. us leave a tribute to you in this earth hallelujah. lord and let us pass the baton on Thank while there you, is Jesus. still time thank you lord in jesus name we have prayed amen wherever you are we thank god for your life just believe god the bible says for with god all things are possible. There is nothing impossible for God to do for you. All you need is to obey his word, honor his word, and do what he's asking you to do. May God bless you. We'll see you again this time in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.